Hey everyone, this is Vance here. Um, I've got something today I'm going to fix and I'm going to show you uh, what it is. Um, I have got this cordless drill. Uh, it looks like this. Uh, this is a Makita brand cordless drill. Um, it's a um, pretty good. It's a lithium ion 18 volt cordless drill. I've had it for a while and um, this one I got in a set of two. There was the impact driver like this and then I also got a uh, drill driver like this that has a, a regular drill chuck on it. So what's wrong with this drill, and the reason why I'm gonna, I want to try to fix it, is uh, the speed control doesn't work that good. So if you grab this trigger and you pull it slowly, see how it just it jumped to a high speed pretty quick. See that? There, I got it to start slow that time. But, but definitely, it's just, I've been using it, and it just doesn't have the, uh, the real accurate speed control that it used to like for example on the drill which I don't use as much I mean look you can you can really control this thing any speed you want and it's very easily controlled with the trigger okay so that's what we're gonna try to do today so what I ordered and what I got in is this um, this is uh, a replacement trigger switch for that drill um, this part was uh, $34 and some change, so it was not that expensive to purchase. And it looks like this. So this is the replacement part that you get. Um, it's pretty much just a, a little trigger mechanism with some wires on it. Um, and this is the uh, how the speed control on that drill is done. Um, so the procedure I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my drill apart and I'm going to put in this new trigger and uh, see if that fixes the speed control. Okay, so one of the first things you do with the drill um, is you take the battery out. Um, and then this front part right here um, is actually just a, um, a friction held on. It should just slide off like that. Um, and then it looks like there's uh, four, five, six, seven, eight screws um, throughout there uh, that you take out. Okay, it does look like to get the two halves apart, this back piece may have to come off. So let's go ahead and take that off just to be sure. There's two screws back here. By the way, um, this is what the screws look like and uh, it's a pretty good design too because all uh, so far 10 screws have been the exact same length so you don't have to worry about keeping them separated. So I just now noticed this, uh, this label right here, um, which was peeling up on my drill, it's kind of old. It's right across the seam there. Um, so I'm just going to take this, uh, this razor knife uh, and, and just cut it. So our replacement part does seem to look exactly like the uh, one that's in there, which is good. And what it looks like, uh, now that I'm looking at it, is here and here are uh, terminals with screws. Um, so you can see here that that's a uh, screw terminal there. So those will have to come out um, for sure. Thank you. 
So something uh, I think it's important to pay attention to right here is that as the switch is in this half of the drill, um, uh, the half where uh, the screws thread into, uh, the black wire is on the top. So that way we just don't won't mess that up and we put it back together. Okay, just uh, I'll show you this. Uh, this is a little plug that you have to disconnect and uh, this is one of those plugs that you have to uh, depress a little thing before it'll come loose. So I did it with my um, thumbnail. It's that little thing right there has to be depressed. See that? That's how to get that little connector loose. Um, so we've got this separated from the drill but you can see this is the uh, battery connection down here is where those two plug into looks like. So to get these out I'm just going to use some uh, needle nose pliers. You can probably just pull them out by hand. Just to show you what I'm doing here. I'm just putting the pliers kind of underneath there and grabbing it and like that and pulling it out. It's probably not the only way to do it but it's one way to get them out. So this piece here um, is kind of nice because it's got a plus and a minus molded into it and red was cooked. Uh, red was hooked to plus so um, we'll do the same thing. Now, as you can see on my drill, um, this is an older drill. It's got some age on it, and um, how much you want to do to clean this up is up to you. If you're doing this job, um, looks like this whole motor assembly could probably just lift out of this piece. Um, I think all I'm going to do is take it and blow it off with compressed air, uh, and that'll be it for me. Um, so I would say something of note is uh, uh, when you put push this part back in, um, that little metal part right there rests right there up against that plastic. Uh, so you've set it in there and kind of rotate it around until it hits. Uh, it was a little tricky to get all this to snap all back in, kind of drop into its correct position, but um, it did. Um, so now we'll put it back together.
um, this is a little plastic piece that actually uh, you slide back and forth. Uh, that's how you change the forward and reverse. Um, it interfaces with a little um, plastic molded um, stud sticking up uh, right here. So uh, be sure you put that back in through the hole in the drill and line that up. Also this little piece here, uh, this little black plastic piece kind of went, has a little holder section here, so put it back into there. That little connector drops down into there. There are some small black wires, um, uh, actually small black and white wire right down there. You can barely see them. Um, uh, when I first put this trigger mechanism in there, uh, I had pinched them. So uh, be really careful when you put this back together not to pinch any wires. Um, you know, kind of stuff them down in there because when this other half goes on it, uh, you don't want it to pinch any wires either. So here's what's going on here. Um, I noticed that thing didn't go down perfectly flush. This little black and white wire have got specific little routings and they needed to take those little slots right there. You see that right there? This white wire and black wire have got a specific little uh, uh, path in the mold. So this is how that routing of that little uh, white and black wire should look. Okay, this thing feels good. It, it, it's not rocking. The switch mechanism feels good in there, solid. A minute ago it was rocking because it was sitting on top of that those two little small wires. You want to go around and look at the seam all the way around, okay? Because um, you want to make sure that there's uh, no gap whatsoever before you start just driving your screws in to put this thing back together.
Okay, got her back together and uh, do a little function test here. Uh, as you can see, this thing um, is giving me real good speed control, and that's what I wanted. So we'll make sure it goes in reverse. So um, this is the switch uh, that I took out. This is the old one, okay? Um, I gave some consideration to trying to take this thing apart and cleaning this switch, thinking that there might be a way to um, kind of make this switch um, last. Um, there is a screw right here. I don't know if there's a way to take this switch apart and clean it or not. Um, you could take that screw out. It looks like this metal piece here would come off. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think you can get this plastic part apart. Um, for $34, uh, I would just get a new one, to be honest with you. It's not that much money. And um, if you cleaned it, uh, even if you did find a way to get it apart and you cleaned the contacts on it and got it working good again, um, it might last just for a short amount of time and then and then do the same thing again so I recommend just replacement alright guys I hope you enjoyed that video uh, maybe if you've got a power drill like that you could uh, uh, use this as a, a way to get you ready for doing the repair uh, look every drill is going to be different that was a particular Makita model um, but I did this many years ago on another drill that I think was a Porter cable and uh, they're kind of similar that trigger switch is a wear out item and you can buy the replacement part and changing them out really is a matter of taking it apart really carefully making sure that you put it back exactly the way you took it apart and uh, making sure that there's not different screw lengths that one they were all the same screw length so that made it kind of nice um, but that general guideline will get you through fixing one of those drills uh, so okay everybody thanks for watching the video if you haven't subscribed to my channel uh, please do that and then uh, Check back for future videos.